The day of the march, Dr. King takes this only known copy of his speech called Normalcy Never Again with him. Nowhere does it mention his dream. With the Lincoln Memorial behind him and facing a quarter of a million people, Dr. King delivers his speech. I was standing up and to the side. Now is the time. And after he went through all this stuff about what we're here today, the guys are checking so forth and so forth. He... Stop. <laughs> Did you hear that? It said after he went through this stuff that we're here to cash a check. Did you hear that? Okay, let's just rewind it for a moment. Listen. Now is the time. And after he went through all this stuff about what we're here today, the guys are checking so forth and so forth. That, that, that after he went through all this stuff about we're here to cash our check and so forth and so on. That's what that was about, niggas. That was about cashing a check. And, and, and who's those guys standing around him that like Muslims or something like that? Who are those guys too? Let's, let's back it up one more time. This is, this is your story. This is nigger history. But you don't know your own history. King takes this only known copy of his speech called Normalcy Never Again with him. Nowhere does it mention his dream. With the Lincoln Memorial behind him and facing a quarter of a million people, Dr. King delivers his speech. I was standing up and to the side. Now is the time. And after he went through all this stuff about what well, we're here today, the guys were checking so forth and so forth. And he paused. And what I did see him do. I still have a dream. He turned the text over. He grabbed the podium. And he leaned back and looked out. I have a dream. I was out in the crowd somewhere, and when he swung into I have a dream, I said, all oh, expletive deleted. Um, you know, that he was like, oh, shit. He was like, oh, fucking shit. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? oh motherfucker. He said something, I mean, do you believe these Negroes now? You see, the truth, the truth always comes out, like it says. This is why these niggas, these niggas are, are very interesting. Came back and looked out. I have a dream. I was out in the crowd somewhere, and when he swung into I Have a Dream, I said, all oh, expletive deleted. After all that work that night before, up and down the steps, and then he went on into the I Have a Dream section. That means that they were not down with this dream thing. They were obviously not down with this dream. Therefore, this was a big controversial part of it. And Dorothy Cotton Picking Nigga already tells you what was the origin of it. It was a very blonde and blue-eyed white woman who just wanted her children to play with black people. She didn't want anything good for us. She just wanted what was best for her daughter. How has things changed? Not much. She transformed old marble steps into modern-day And I said to her... That you heard that right there? He turned those marble steps into a modern-day pulpit. You know, you know, niggas, when niggas speak, uh, sometimes we like to say little things, black people like to say little things, you know, coded. You know, just, just rewind that again, because some people don't pick up on that. He transformed old marble steps into modern day program. And I said to whoever that person sitting next to me was, I said, the people here today, they don't know it, but they're about ready to go to church. They were about to go to church, but they did not hear the words of the Lord. They heard the vision out of Martin Luther King's own heart. That was actually based on somebody else's wants and desires that happened to be blonde-haired and blue-eyed. How sad it is, but how true. <laughs> In two weeks, the dream would become a nightmare. You came to church, you had friends 
who by the afternoon were dead.